have you tried to explain to your friend what it is like to be an airsofter on an airsofter day? Well, here's mine. Your time, your time. How's my ninja loadout? What's up Airsoft lovers? This is Andrew Live from Quasmar Airsoft. And you know, we all started from somewhere and I believe you guys must run into some of the following questions. What should I give for my loadout? How do I start filming Airsoft? How to edit the videos? Well, it's your lucky day. Today we will cover all that. And right under that bar, we do have created some shortcuts for you guys. So if you're running short on time, want to save some time, you can skip around or just watch the whole damn thing. Now, let's get the video started. Starting from my closings, to be honest, I don't have a must to go close. I put on whatever I feel like to wear. However, I do recommend wearing some sporting boxers with the proper sizing. This way your dinghy wouldn't get into a way while you play airsoft. Here is a part that gets ignored a lot. That is a pair of good socks. Those don't seem that important, but it actually does a huge part of your airsofting experience. So make sure you get yourself a good pair of socks. I would recommend checking out some of the mountain climbing socks. They may seem pricey, but I promise you it is a great investment. For my pants, I usually wear my TMC Gen 3 Combat Tactical Pants. Those are quite affordable and pretty comfortable. Most importantly, they are robust and the pants stays in place and protects my knee fairly well. Boots wise, it's the same story as the socks. I highly recommend spending a little more on it since it really affects your overall safety and airsofting experiences. 
any kind of good hiking boots would do. And personally, I roll with those Meru Moab 2 boots. They are very comfortable and they should protect my ankle well. I use the TNC Ronin Battle Belt and some TNC Mag pouches. And the holster, I use a Clone XH35 Flash Hider holster. It pretty much accepts all kinds of pistols that has a rail. And for my pistol, I roll with this Army R501 High Kappa. Not only I've loved the look of it, and it is quite affordable. I can beat the shit out of it and feel good for the rest of the day. And it's pretty reliable. Usually I will carry 4 mags with me, which is not too many and not too less. For clothing, it's pretty much the same story. I wear whatever I feel like. Most of the time, I would just go with our quad tactical shirt. Very cool, very easy to clean, and robust as fuck. For my vest, I use the FCSK 2.0 tactical vest. I love the modular design and how comfortable it is. This vest does not wobble around when I sprint or jump. And most importantly, it looks great too. Now for the guns. Recently, I found myself using the GHK URGI for the most of my games since it is quite a reliable gun and so far it did not fail on me. The shards are very predictable and I can use it like a DMR with some heavyweight BBs. However, I do love the Tokyo Maori NWS as well. Both perform like a dream and I like them both. Coming to headwear, I wear the quad hat the most of the time since it is light and tactical and it's very easy to put on other accessories. Sometimes I would even wear my homemade bamboo hat under hot weathers. And for eye protections, I use the Pyramax Eye Force Anti-Fog Eye Protection. It covers my eyes very well and it doesn't fog up easily. Believe me, fogging up in the middle of a game can be very very frustrating. Make sure you get yourself a good pair of eye protection that doesn't fog up easily. Now for my beautiful face. I use those old fly head face and eye protections, which I took out the mesh eye protection part because this thing is extremely dangerous. Small BB debris can still get into your eyes, so please do not use it. I only keep the face part because this protects my face fairly well and I can breathe easily with it. Plus, I can aim without any kind of uncomfortness. Finally, the cameras. I use three cameras, which are two Insta360 One RS and one run cam. I will set one on my head and one on the gun. Trajectory wise, I will set my run cam right under my red dot. This protects the camera very well and it won't get into my way. And make sure you get some lens guards because you don't want any shots landed directly onto your lens. For this case, I would recommend the diving case because this will protect the whole camera. After my cameras are set, I will secure it with my ear protection. I use the Earmore M32 and it does the job okay. But the cool thing is, Jess helped me to modify this Bluetooth con system onto it. Now I can run this headphone on both Bluetooth and the radio. However, if you guys got some good recommendations, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. Now you might be asking, how do we start editing the videos? Well, here's how. First, you will need Insta360 Editor, Adobe Premiere, 
and a card reader to read the cards. And if you got all the videos recorded and saved up into your computer, here are the three steps that you can start editing with ease. First, I would start with the folders because making the right folders for your files could really shorten the time you spend on trying to find the right files. So what I do is I would divide my files into first person view, third person view, and scope cam view. And I would drag each camera's files into each folder. After that, I would think of a story that is based on the game I just played. I would have a basic structure that I would think of the main topic of the game. Because we simply can't show all the footages to the viewers, this would be too long and too boring. So we only can pick the best parts that packs into a 10 to 15 minute video. Once you got the basic storyline, you can begin processing the files. For 360 files, they are a bit different, since it's technically recording with two cameras. And if you record the footage, there will be three different files. You can get rid of the LRV, which stands for Low Resolution Video. But for the rest two, you will need to keep both of them, otherwise the file would not work. Once you pick the file, I wouldn't recommend using Premiere to edit it, since you have to manually key in the numbers in order to turn the camera. I personally hate that. And so I would use the Insta360 editor first and export the file before I put it into Premiere. The app is really simple. Just drag and use the angle you want. And I would always turn on the direction lock before I export the file. Because if there's no direction lock, when I turn on to a different direction, the perfect angle would be gone. To be honest, I'm really, really lazy. So I don't wanna adjust each angle all the time. So once I turn on the direction lock, problem solved. And I would also turn on the lens guard setting to prevent the weird camera stitches. After that, I would just press Ctrl E and export the files. Just play around with it, it's very easy to get a hang of it. Now the final step. Once you start editing in Premiere to make your life easier, here's a little trick. Try to have three cameras record at the same time. This way you would have an easier time stacking those three footages together. Once you have those three files read and stacked, here's a useful function called synchronous. You can select the three files and synchronize those through the sound of it. It will automatically line up the sound and those three files will be lined up correctly with the right sound. Now just trim the parts you don't need and leave only one soundtrack and you can have some wonderful camera switches. After I edit the video, I will watch through my edits and think of my line and narrates the video. I will use an Excel file to type in whatever I wanted to say. And following the storyline, eventually record my voice, export the file, and you are good to go. <laughs> That's it for the video today. To be honest, this entire thing actually took me a whole year to figure out the entire know-how, but I'm really glad I finally got it figured out, and I'm really happy to share with you guys. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share this video, and don't forget the super thanks button. Support us, and for 2023, we got a lot more video coming this year, so make sure you stay tuned, and we'll see you soon.